Road in Town Hall tonight, folks. 60 minutes of fun and music brought to you by Ipana Toothpaste and Salapatica. Ipana for the smile of beauty. Salapatica for the smile of health. Fun with our star comedian Fred Allen. Music by Peter Van Steeden. And another gala amateur contest. New music, new voices, new laughs. It's Town Hall tonight. <laughs> Crowd cheers Fred Allen as he leads his parade to the old town hall. Fred's leading the band with the billiard cue, and America's eight balls, the mighty Allen Art players, are rolling along behind. Let's join the merry crowd. Everybody's going. Here they come, the smart set. Shall I call your taxi, Mrs. Van Morgan? Yes, and get me one with the radio doorman. It's town hall tonight. <laughs> Interior decorators. Your furniture will have to go, Mrs. Snag. The trend is modernistic. My furniture may go, but my radio stays, Mr. Lavender. It's town hall tonight. Supreme Court judges. The paper says the Supreme Court finally agrees, Hoyman. Yep, the whole nine voted for the same radio program. It's town hall tonight. Well, sir, Fred stopped in front of the old town hall, and he's welcoming the crowd with ad lib abenda about the big show on the inside. Let's listen. The eyes of Texas may be on you, folks, but the ears of Texas are trained on the old town hall. So go right in, neighbors, if you kindly... Woo-hoo! Howdy, Miss Allen. Well, woo-hoo back to you, and good evening, Mrs. Trice. Sing the line, please. Hi there, Judge. Ten days and cost, Ellen. That was the last time, Judge, not tonight. Now, don't drag along, folks. Hurry, hurry, hurry. What about it, Fred? Okay, Harry. (laughs) Peter's opening with his love in your eyes. Righto. Let her go, Peter. Presenting that robed and again behemoth of blustering badinage, Fred Allen in person. Thank you. What is that brobdignag in there, Harry? Well, it's uh, spelled with a... <laughs> You're going to strip your gums using words like that one of these nights. We ought to put Joe Brown on a night you have a word like that. His mouth just about... Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before we... Uh... Before we drag out the lasso and show you the jokes we've rounded up for this evening, I'll read you the town hall bulletin for tonight. Hodge White, the first grocer to pour molasses on his stock to make shoplifting a messy business, says that the store will be open day and night until further notice. Somebody brought a bird dog in this afternoon while Hodge was hanging a turkey in the window, The bird dog pointed at the turkey, and his tail is sticking out so that nobody can close the door. So unless he can back the dog out tail first or sell the turkey, Hodge says he'll be open day and night indefinitely. (laughs) So much for open house around town. And now for the town hall news. The curtain, Harry. It is being unfurled, Fred. Thank you. Coming down in cellophane, eh? The (laughs) The lights go out. And we bring you the latest news of the week. The town hall news sees nothing, shows all. Beacon, New York, the first therapeutic theater in the United States, opens at Beacon. Doctors say that people with serious phobias can overcome their inhibitions and mental hazards through acting spontaneously in therapeutic theater. Town hall news tableau shows how new theater will help patients conquer phobias. The first scene, the kitchen of Mr. and Mrs. Barnaby Limp. A phobia is born. 
Hello, Ducky. Don't ducky me, Barnaby Limp. You get at them dishes. I'm going to a movie. Are you taking Daddy with you, sugar? No, nah, I'm enjoying myself tonight. Oh, Mother told me married life was one sweet song. Never mind what that old bat told you. I'm telling you to do them dishes. Yes, Dove. And when you're through, water the rubber plant. Give the baby its bottle and fix the hem on my black skirt. <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> and quit bawling and go to work. Goodbye. Oh, I wish I was single again. <laughs> Barnaby. Oh, Mama. Barnaby. Oh, hello, Clarence. I heard you crying. What's the matter? Oh, it's Mabel. Again? Yes. I slave over this leaky sink and she goes out to the movies. Why don't you assert yourself? Oh, I can't. I'm just putty in her scheme of things. Now, Barnaby, you, you've got to master this phobia. Oh, how can I, Clarence? Well, now, here, you go to this address. What is it, the YMCA? No, no, it's the Therapeutic Theater at Beacon, New York. Now, you go this instant. I'll just throw something over this apron and I'm off. Yes, I'll do your dishes, Barnaby. Goodbye. Goodbye. After explaining his case to the doctor at the Therapeutic Theater, Barnaby Limp is advised to indulge in some spontaneous acting. The scene, the therapeutic stage of the Therapeutic Theater. Is Mr. Limp ready, Dr. Precox? Yes, Miss Q. I've just finished diagnosing his case. What's my trouble? Your wife completely dominates you. The medical term for your affliction is uh, dementia better half us. <laughs> You've got to throw off that mental yoke, Mr. Lim. Yes, but how can I? This phobia playlet will unshackle your libido. Phobia playlet? Yes, you're going to act spontaneously with Miss Q. I will play the browbeaten wife. And you are the cold, cruel husband, Mr. Lim. Me? Yes. Once you have played this role, your inhibitions will disappear. Do I boss my wife around in this sketch? Yes, and after you play this part, you'll boss your wife around at home. Oh, boy. Let's get on with the acting, huh? You start the scene, Miss Q. Let's go. Get up those dishes, Barnaby Limp. I'm going to a movie. Oh, yeah? That's what you think. Why, Pinky. Don't Pinky me. You're doing these dishes tonight. Uh, yes, dear. And when you finish dunking that pottery, you can start donning my socks. Uh, but I uh, darned the heels yesterday. Well, the toes is out today. When I went to put them socks on this morning, they run up my legs like a couple of shin guards. Oh, you slave driver. Quiet. You Simon the Grave. Quiet. After you weld them socks, press my other suit, shine my shoes, and trim the wick in my cigar lighter. Yes, dear. Now, that's more like it. Now I'm going out and just plastic. Is it, is, it, is it all right if I go to bed before you get back? No. Get your coat on and sit by the phone. By the phone? Yeah. When the bartender gives you the SOS, come down and carry me home. <laughs> yes, dear. So long. Oh, wonderful, Barnaby. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Some acting, hey, Doc. Gosh, you had me scared, Mr. Limp. Uh, my cure, Doc? Your inferiority complex is completely dominated. Your connubial phobia has subsided. Do you think my wife will sense it? Absolutely. Subconsciously, your wife is subdued this very minute. Oh, that's all I wanted to know. I'll show her. You bet you will. Good day, Mr. Limp. Goodbye. Whoopee! His phobia well in hand, Barnaby Limp, the wife tamer, returns to his home a new man. The scene? The family kitchen the next night. Hello, lovey. Do you sense it? Sense what? I told you to get at them dishes. Ah, go fry your fat. <laughs> Who said that? Who's talking in here? I'm talking. I'm through washing dishes around here. Have you gone nuts? I'm bossing this house, Mabel Limp. Who says so? The therapeutic theater says so. That's who says so. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, we'll settle that right now. I'll fix you. Oh, hell, put down that mug. I'll put it down your throat, you little shrimp. Oh, murder, help. Take that. Oh, no, not the wet end. Oh. <laughs> no. Who's boss of this joint? Oh, you are, Lammy. Okay, now start bathing them dishes, chicken liver. <laughs> yes, dear. I'm going to a movie. Which one? The devil is a sissy, and so are you. <laughs> New York City, New York. New York City, New York. The only newsreel in the world that repeats on occasion. New York City, New York. Town, <laughs> Town Hall News presents a ten-second review of this week's outstanding motion picture. That popular Indian masterpiece, The Last of the Mohicans. The Last of the Mohicans. Ugh. Who you? Ugh. Me Mohican. Who you? Ugh. Me Mohican, too. Ugh. We only two Mohican left. Me fix that. Ugh. Uh. 
me last of Mohicans. Stockholm, Sweden. Stockholm, Sweden. Eugene O'Neill, American dramatist, wins Nobel Prize in Literature for 1936. Town Hall News shows Mr. O'Neill receiving honored trophy. Come in. Here is your award, Mr. O'Neill. What do you mean by knocking? Why didn't you ring the bell? This is the Nobel Prize, Mr. O'Neill. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now... And now, let... Say, who's that typing? Is that the... If that's the author of Anthony Adverts working on a sequel... Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Fred. I, I was just beginning an open letter here on my portable. Well, I... I'd rather hear the letter than that pounding, Harry. All right. I start off here by saying, my dear radio audience, I... I... I, Harry? Uh -huh. Weren't you taught at school never to start a letter with the word I? Oh, well, now, wait a minute, Fred. You don't understand. Oh, but... yes, I do. You should start off with a word like having. You know... Having just received the knitted watch bob, etc., 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 something like that. But never with I. Well, Fred, look, I wasn't speaking of myself. Now listen. My dear radio audience, I, Panna, is the one toothpaste you should always remember. Oh, I get it, Harry. Yes, and more and more people are getting it every day, Fred. For I, Panna, is not only a great favorite because it cleans and brightens teeth so well... But when used with massage, Ipana has the extra advantage of helping tone and stimulate gums. Gums which do not get enough exercise from the soft, creamy foods we eat nowadays. That's why, like so many dentists, we advise... Every time you brush your teeth with Ipana, put a little extra Ipana on your brush or fingertip and massage your gums with it. In that way, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be giving your gums the toning and stimulation they need to help guard against serious gum trouble. So you'll have firmer gums brighter teeth, and a far more attractive smile if you'll always remember Ipana for the smile of beauty. Ipana Troubadours have just played Taint Good. Taint Good isn't my symphonic opinion. It's the name of the number. Now, on Friday night... Mr. Oh, gosh, just Mr. when I'm... Mr. Quiet. Quiet, please. If that's somebody yelling down the ventilator, you'll be gone with the wind in just a minute. Hello. Well, sir... <laughs> How do you like that? A LeBlanc reception, two for one. <laughs> well, sir, <laughs> the Wednesday will come when you wish you had that second reception. Something to... Well, sir, they laughed when I said my cocoa was cold. They didn't know there was a hole in the back of my toupee. <laughs> if it isn't Portland. Yes. Now, I want you to, to give us a sample of your best acting tonight, Portland. Eddie Cantor is here tonight. Oh, boy! No, no, not oh, boy. It's Eddie Cantor. <laughs> oh, girl! Oh. <laughs> you see, that's where you could have used your second reception if you wanted to. <laughs> All right, now, uh, what's with you? Well, Honda set me up. <laughs> 
What a cue, huh? What a cue. Papa sent me out to mail a letter, so I thought I'd drop in. Well, don't tell me Papa saw himself in the back of his blue serge suit and he's sending himself fan mail. No. Papa's writing our congressman. He's worried about conditions. You mean your father resents the general upswing in business? I'll say it's costing him money. Well, how can the upswing cost him? How How is that? Well, Papa's a plumber, mm -hmm. and when he didn't work during the Depression, he only lost $40 a week. So? So, now since the plumber's got a raise, Papa's losing 48 and those extra $8 are not to be sneezed at. <laughs> no, not unless they've got pepper on them, no. <laughs> if things get any better... Papa will go out of his mind. Well, watch two steps in his life. <laughs> Can't uh, Papa get in on the boom? He's thinking about selling fruit knives to the big corporation. What will General Motors and Western Electric do with fruit knives? Papa says they can use them to cut melons. Well, it's really... <laughs> It's really <laughs> it's really wonderful that the dividends the big companies are paying. You know, if some of the firms keep giving away money, the first thing you know, the stockholders will get the business. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. No, a stockholder can never tell when he's getting the business. <laughs> I uh, I wish I had some stock that would pay me something. Haven't you got any? of anything? Well, I've got 200 shares of International Donut. Isn't the donut company declaring a dividend? Yes, they're making the hole smaller. <laughs> I get it. They're putting the dough back in the business. Now, look, look, Porter. <laughs> if you have any consideration for your public, that little old man in Des Moines, <laughs> you... <laughs> You'll pick up that joke and leave. Oh, no, you don't. Mr. Bell. Oh, no, no, not Mr. those people Bell. from the closet. Come in, Tim. <laughs> Make it snappy, Father Boy. I'm right on your rear end like a taillight, boy. <laughs> now, just a minute. Now, you boys may have something on your mind, but I won't believe it until I see the x-ray play. Look, we're not here to argue, friend. Right, Bob? Right. Right, Portland? Right. Well, it isn't right as far as I'm concerned. Now, don't get excited, Mr. Allen. Mr. Bellow and Mr. Fogg are from the auto show. So what? We're here to see you about a car. Yeah, what kind of a crate are you driving, brother? Mr. Allen's a pedestrian, Mr. Fogg. A, a pedestrian? Yes, I'm a pedestrian. My father before me was a pedestrian. My grandfather was... Uh, this is the machine age, brother. Yeah, if it wasn't for the game laws... You pedestrians would be extinct. <laughs> Haven't you seen any of the new cars, Mr. Allen? No, no. This year's auto show is next year's parking space. I can wait. There's no hurry about it. Hey, this is 1936, brother. Today, every pedestrian has got to buy a car or take to the hill. And there's only one car to buy. Right. It's the Scooter 6. Is the Scooter 6 a good car, Mr. Bellow? It's the lowest low-priced car on the market today. How, how cheap is it? Get these terms. Nothing down, and the company gives you a six-month head start. How many miles do you get to the gallon? Nobody knows. What is it, a trade secret? No, but the car's only been out a year, and nobody's finished the first gallon yet. <laughs> hey, uh, I sold a scooter six last week. What happened, Mr. Bellow? The tank was empty, but the customer just had his suit cleaned. The car got a whiff of the gasoline on the guy's coat, and the customer shot through the showroom window doing 45. <laughs> that sounds pretty dangerous, Mr. Bellow. The Scooter 6 is foolproof, Alan. Just the car for you. What do you... What do you mean, foolproof? You can't speed in it? No, sir. In this car, the radio lets you know how fast you're doing. How does it work, Mr. Bellow? Well, sir, the radio's hooked down to your speedometer. If you're doing 30, the radio gets you Wayne King. If you're going 40 with your arm around a dame... Bang. You get the voice of experience. Suppose you're going 60 and you get a ticket. You get the goodwill card. <laughs> well, how does she ride, A.L.? <laughs> Brother? Brother, driving a scooter six, you'll think you're mounted on a whipped cream horse, hurdling a hill of fuzz. Oh, boy. Going over a bump feels like you're riding a plate of jello bareback. <laughs> What? what about accessories? Well, everything's complete. Swivel rumble seats, bookends for your old maps, 
Hall tree and umbrella rack, FOB, your front door. No sun lamp? No sun lamp. But to every customer buying a scooter six during the show, we're presenting a log cabin trailer absolutely free. I don't want a trailer. Well, you got to take a trailer. The company insists. Why? There'll be nobody living in it. Yeah, that's, uh, what, that's you... what you think. The man from the finance company will be living in it till you make your first six payments. That joke wasn't so good, it took two of you to handle it. <laughs> good joke in the thing and you blow up. <laughs> well, now, listen, gentlemen. <laughs> gentlemen, you automobile, man, you're, you're, you're over-anxious. That's the whole trouble. Now, let's get back to the trailer. Tell me confidentially, is the trailer just four cold walls or is it furnished? Is it furnished? It has five pieces of rustic furniture and a piano. There isn't room for a piano in a trailer, is there, Mr. Bellow? Why, our pianos have got outboard motors, sis. Our baby grand does 50 miles an hour, runs right alongside your trailer. <laughs> what about the bathtub? That's extra. It hooks on the outside like a lifeboat. <laughs> it sounds homey, Mr. Allen. Yes. Why, homey ain't the word. We even give you mice on roller skates. <laughs> mice on roller skates? Yeah, you keep the same mice. You don't want strange mice jumping in and out of your trailer on tour, do you? <laughs> you ain't going wrong in a scooter six, brother. I can see. You're riding along now, Mr. Allen. Oh, what a picture. First there's you, humming along in a scooter six. Then your log cabin trailer bouncing along in your wake. Over to your right is your piano, taking the hills in seconds. And then there's your mice, skating figure eights under the wheels. <laughs> One big happy family. What do I do for entertainment? A major Bose unit follows you along on bicycles. <laughs> That's done it. I'll take a scooter six. Now, what's my first payment? Just a handshake, brother. Here you are. Excuse the hangnail. Thanks. Here's your receipt. Uh, so long, bud. So long, boys. Happy trailing, Portland. Tally, ho! <laughs> and now the town hall quartet, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the boys sing Texas Dance. Texas Dan, from down on the Rio Grande, I ride the range and fan the breeze with a calico horse between my knees, and right or wrong, I do as I please. My name is Texas Dan. There's been a many a man that started to call my hand, and you can tell if I lost the one by counting the notches on my gun. And I didn't put them there just for fun. My name is Texas Dan. I once was an honest man way down on the Rio Grande. I had a home to call my own and I had a heart, but it turned to stone. And now I'm a maverick and I ride alone. My name is Texas Dan. I loved a gal called Ann, and I loved as a good man can, and I believed every word she said till I found that she lied. Then I shot her dead. And now there's a price upon my head. My name is Texas Dan. That price on Texas Dan is open to any man. But I'm warning you all before you try it, a tooth for a tooth and an eye for an eye, because I don't care if I live or die. My name is Texas Dan. I come from a fighting clan, and I want you to understand that I fear no man that I ever saw for a 44 is my only law. And I'll live just as long as I'm quick on the draw. My name is Texas Dan. Thank you, boys. And now, Professor Rumpelmeyer, will you kindly step up to the microphone? About here, Mr. Allen? That'll do very nicely. Now, this is the gentleman I spoke to you about this morning, Mr. Von Zell. Oh, yes. This is the subject. Sub well, what do you mean, subject, Fred? What am I... Now, compose yourself, Mr. Von Zell. Mr. Allen told me that you'd been working pretty hard, and by a very simple test, I can discover whether or not he's right. What kind of a test? 
It merely involves an association of ideas. I supply a word, and you answer immediately with the word that it suggests. For instance, if I say knife, you would most likely say fork. That is, if your brain is not too tired. Shall I proceed? <laughs> sure, go ahead. It's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Von Zell. Bread. Butter. Simone. Simone. Hot. Dog. Now, let's see. One more. Cold. Sal hepatica. Pardon me, Mr. Von Zell, but I'm afraid that last answer is irrelevant. Oh, oh, pardon me, sir, but sal hepatica is the first thought of people with cold. Because you can often throw off a cold more quickly if you remove waste from the body, and at the same time help nature combat the acidity that usually accompanies a cold. And sal hepatica is the mineral salt laxative especially made to do both those things at once. It pays to fight a cold the modern way, ladies and gentlemen. Just get plenty of rest, drink plenty of liquids, be careful of your diet, and at the first sign of your cold, put two teaspoonfuls of sal hepatica in a glass of water and drink it. Remember sal hepatica for the smile of health. <laughs> Well, there's the theme song of the mighty Allen Art Players, and they'll be with you immediately after your station announcement. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to prove that a harmless-looking radio set can be transformed into an infernal machine... We present the mighty Alan Art Player. <laughs> Tonight, they dramatize an episode in the life of that Chinese schlemiel, Detective... <laughs> Detective... <laughs> Detective One Long Pan. It's called The Great Dane Mystery, or Here Today and Doggone Tomorrow. Overture, Peter. <laughs> You rang, Mrs. Van Dyke? Yes, Abercrombie. What time is it? I don't know. The uh, hourglass has stopped, madam. The hourglass not running? No, madam. There's a clinker rampant in the sand. It stopped at exactly three grains before tipping time. I'm expecting a man from the dog show, Abercrombie. I'm entering King Charles. Oh, I'm sure he'll win, madam. King Charles is the finest Great Dane in the country. Oh, he's been terribly nervous lately, Abercrombie. I'm afraid the dog's got something on his mind, madam. See that he gets his afternoon nap. He'll never win first prize with bags under his eyes. The door, Abercrombie. Yes, madam. I'm Mr. Palm. Is Mrs. Van Dyke in? Oh, yes, she's expecting you, sir. Come right in, Mr. Palm. I'm from the dog show, Mrs. Van Dyke. I should say so. Open a window, Abercrombie. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. Is there anything else? Yes, tip off. I'm tipping, ma'am. Now, Mrs. Van Dyke, I'll just fill out your entry blank. Your dog's name, please. King Charles. Breed? Great Dane. Pedigree? His father was a nephew of Rin Tin Tin's. Mother? His mother was incognito. <laughs> um, who's his favorite uh, movie star? Helen Twelve Trees. Fine, 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 fine. Now, uh, now if I can just get a picture of your dog for the program, Mrs. Van Dyke. Oh, I... yes, I'll have him brought right in. Uh, you rang, Mrs. Van Dyke? Aroused King Charles Abercrombie. He's uh, napping, ma'am. He's apt to resent it. Intimate to him that he's to be photographed. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'll set my camera up here. Yes, pose him in front of this statue of Napoleon, as though he'd sensed the bone in Bonaparte. Mrs. Van Dyke! Oh, Mrs. Van Dyke! What is it? King Charles has disappeared. King Charles gone? Are you sure? Yes, his bed is empty, the window's open, and the dog is gone. He's been dog-napped. I'll call the police. Yes, help! Police! Help! Police! Calling all cars, calling Detective One Long Pan, prize Great Dane stolen at Van Dyke Mansion. Calling One Long Pan, come out of that Minsky show and get on the job. <laughs> Calling Detective One Long Pan, Great Dane stolen, proceed at once. Come in. Greetings, salutation. One Long Pan on job with Hey Nani Nani and Hot uh, So and So. If you're peddling lychee nuts, Oriental, go around to the back door. One Long Pan, not uh, full of nut man, lady. Long pan detective, crime solved, cut late, murder specialty. Further information called Circle 9, 2222. Excuse, please. Get tobacco between front teeth. 
You're just in time. Yes, King Charles is being stolen. King missing, you play clean. Three no clump, land slam, spade. <laughs> no, you fool. King Charles is my prize dog. Yes, Long Pen, he's worth $10,000. Oh, 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 your pepper. How can little dogs save so much money? <laughs> Scotch carrier? <Scotch> no. <laughs> no, he's a great dame. Very good. Long time get busy on job. First, need the scripture. King Charles was white and big with black spots and small teeth. King Charlie fight like pig, black spats, false teeth. <laughs> he, uh, he had a high bark, cropped ears, and a pointed nose. High bark, chopped ears, pointed hose. Very good. Long pan, fine dog, jig time. Mystery solved. Goodbye. What mystery solved? That door leads into a closet. What kind of a detective is this, Bum? You describe a dog and he runs into a closet. <laughs> Perhaps he's taking down a moth to warm up. Come out of that closet, Long Pan. Hi ho, everybody. Pick up all. What's new, Long Pan? It's very difficult. What's the big idea ducking into that closet? Long Pan, you strategy. Think talk of the horse, he said. Long pan never fail, lady. Not fine, King Charlie. Long pan take his place, dog show. Personal appearance. <laughs> <laughs> Quit dogging it, Long pan, and get on the job. Happy suggestion. Long pan, Leonard Klein. Now, before dogs fly coop, what happened? King Charles had his lunch. Oh, served lunch. Bridget, the cook. Very good, Flunky. You call Bridget Planto. Yes, sir. You don't think my cook would poison King Charles, do you? Man, not put crow in food can still get pomade. You catch on? Wow, joke. Oh. <laughs> Did you call, Mom? Yes, Long Pan wants to cross-examine you, Bridget. Long Pan never crossed Bridget till they come to it. This is fantastic. Quiet, baggy pan. <laughs> not fantastic. It's up say, unless cat swallow gold piece, do not open puss. <laughs> well, what's on your mind, Togo? What, uh, what, uh, want you cook for, missing dog? Well, now, first he had anchovy on dog biscuits. Appetizer, very tasty, very tasty. Yes. <laughs> then he had the consomme with breadsticks. Delicious, delicious. A double hamburger, well, french hamburger. fried potatoes, hamburger, potatoes, and a dimmy toss of barley water. No, uh, dessert. You can't eat dessert after a double hamburger. Long pan always eat banana pan dowdy after double hamburger. <laughs> well, some dogs eat more than others. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Aesop say one man's insult, other man's belly wear. <laughs> What's all this got to do with the mystery? Everything to do. Mystery salt. Thank heaven. What salt is long pen? Double hamburger. The hamburger? Exactly. Smart dog eat hamburger. A shame. Hide till onion wear off breath. <laughs> You're nuts. I didn't put no onions in the hamburger. Oh, very bad, very bad. Open shut case, not stay shut. Insist fly open. <laughs> What's your next move, Long Pan? Long Pan, examine King Charlie Pedro. Maybe leave clue before disappear. Oh, the dog's room is right in here, Long Pan. Ah, uh, you see? Window open, dog bed ruffle. Dog, uh, dog, uh, dog, uh, not slip good. No, no, he's been worried well, lately. Uh, yes, I heard him pacing the floor all last night. What could a dog have on his mind, Long Pan? Only of a dog. <laughs> King Charles was a gentleman, Long Pan, and a bachelor. This uh, copy, copy New York Times on bed uh, for for dog. Yes, King Charles was very particular. He would only sleep on the Times. And he insisted on Esquire for a pillow. This. Uh, Times, times, all, uh, all showed up. Yes, it's Sunday's times. Sunday. Every time I went to change it, he'd bark and growl. Ah, oh, very significant, very significant. <laughs> Everything hussy pussy. <laughs> mystery saw. What, again? Quiet, quiet, hacker. This time, mystery saw positively. In sixty second fact, King Charlie appear front door. Are you sure, Long Pen? He's crazy. Oh, crazy, oh, crazy. So you follow Long Pan Parlor, we see what guy. Let's go. This guy's a phony. Oh, phony, oh, phony. Oh, you hear, you hear bucking. Long Pan never fail. It's King Charles. Long Pan make good at last. Definitely. I should open the door. Oh, oh, oh. 
Here's your dog, Mrs. Van Dyke. Oh, my darling, did nice man bring him home? Yeah, I saw the address on his collar. Are you I... from the bite of we home, brother? No, I'm the doorman. Doorman? What doorman? Doorman, Imperial Hitter, right? Right. This mutt broke in there this afternoon. This mutt, this mutt blow up matinee, right? <laughs> right. Quiet, King Charles. Oh, you bad, you bad doggy. You, you bark all night and day, Hitter. <laughs> very good, very good. A long time on the stand, dog. Very good. After show, you wait the stage door. You, you, you bite the leading man. Say, that's right. How did you know? Oh, Long Pan is wonderful. He said my great dame would be back at one minute past five. You're bad. And that's just when he arrived on the dock. You're bad, you're bad. Well, how did you figure it out, Long Pan? Very simple. King Charlie, chew up, lamented page, Sunday times, lose temper. You mean he saw something there? Something by Brooks Atkinson? You're bad, you're bad. And how, kiddo? King Charlie, King Charlie notice play Hamlet open. King Charlie worry about winning talk show. Go to, to, to matinee. You mean he had to see Hamlet before he did go into the dog show? Exactly. King Charlie lead press agent say, Leslie Howard, greatest dean of all time. Dog, check up. Wonderful! No, 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 not wonderful. Elementary. Aesop say... If Hamlet not going to dogs, dogs will go to Hamlet. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Now, tonight we open the doors of Cupid Allen's Charm School just long enough to settle the age-old question. When does a woman think a man is good-looking and vice versa? The woman speaks. He's not a handsome man, but he has the most glorious smile. The man. Well, she's not exactly pretty, but when she smiles, oh boy. The explanation. An attractive smile is one of your greatest assets. Everyone knows how much it adds to our looks and personalities. But attractive smiles aren't dependent upon teeth alone. Because teeth are seldom at their brightest when gums are tender and under exercise. That's why we earnestly advise Ipana toothpaste and massage. And here's the reason for that advice. Ipana and massage is designed to help tone and strengthen gums as well as clean and brighten teeth. And regular massage with Ipana will give your gums the toning and stimulation they need to help guard against serious gum trouble. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll just remember that dentists approve that simple health routine, that modern schools teach it, and that your smile, to be at its best, needs the help of Ipana, I'm sure you'll always remember Ipana for your smile of beauty. <laughs>
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Peter Van Steeden and the Ipana Troubadours have just played The Way You Look Tonight from Jerome Kern's score of Swing Time. And now, the Town Hall Amateur Contest. Here comes Fred leading another selected group of amateurs out to the microphone. And before they begin, let's give them a real town hall reception. <laughs> Thank you. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we present another group of talented young ladies and gentlemen. The boys and girls are competing for a first prize of $100 in cash and a second prize of $50 in cash. Now, you folks here in the town hall will select your own winners. Your applause after each act will be recorded on our applause machine, and the two acts receiving the highest applause ratings will be called back later for your final votes. Now, first tonight, may I present Billy Carvin. How are you tonight, uh, William? No. You come from Waterbury, Connecticut, is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, you were here last Wednesday, and the show ran so long that, that we didn't have a chance to put you on. I'm sorry about that, and sorry that you had to come way back again tonight. They treat me very nice, anyway. Well, we try to do the best we can, Willie. And what are you going to... Uh, what are you going to... I guess you better get a near, little nearer to the... Everybody's hearing me. That's the trouble. There are complaints <laughs> in there. The... Uh, <laughs> The, uh, you won the uh, the prize that uh, uh, had, uh, on Uncle Jim's contest held up in Waterbury, didn't you, yes, at the Poli Theater? Yes, sir. You'll be happy to know that Uncle Jim is playing at Faye's Providence Theater this week. Well, I asked where he was tonight. You did? Well, well, this is a fine time to ask me because now I can tell everybody and it saves a lot of trouble. <laughs> did you, uh, did you uh, pay any attention to Uncle Jim's unit up there? They were very good. It was very good, huh? And uh, people all saw a lot of them. And they all like Uncle Jim, too. Well, personally, he's a very fine gentleman, Uncle Jim. You know, I've been worried lately, Billy. Did you notice any change about him since he's been on the stage? Well, that's the first time I ever saw him. It is, huh? Yes. Well, I want to tell you, there's a great change come over Uncle Jim since he's returned to the theater. Yesterday, I caught him with spats on. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't got the courage to come right out with the spats where you can see them. He's wearing them under his stockings for the first few days. <laughs> But they'll be out any minute. Well, what are you going to sing for us, Bill? The Little Old Town and Old County Down. Little Old Town and Old County Down. All right, thank you. In that dear little town, in that old county down, if we It was my fairy land, just a wonderful world set apart. Oh, my island of dreams, I am with you, it seems. Now I care not for pain or renown. from Waterbury, Connecticut. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Marie Durkin and Genevieve O'Hara. How old are you, girl? Sixteen. You're both sixteen, are you? Yes. And you live in Brooklyn? Yes. And you dance Irish jigs? No, an Irish reel. Irish reel. Do you, uh, do you commute to take uh, lessons? From... <laughs> but uh, did you ever hear of my... <laughs> Did you? Uh, I meant that you have to go outside of Brooklyn to study Irish dancing. No. But, uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, did you ever hear of my uncle, Shawneen O. Muldoon, the famous Irish dancer? <laughs> he was very light on his feet. The Banshees used to take lessons from my uncle. 
My uncle could dance a, a breakdown on a piece of blue serge without disturbing the lint, okay? <laughs> but what are you going to... Uh, uh, you're going to do an Irish reel, huh? Yes. Is your music all ready? Yes. Would you like to start right in? Yes. You would, yeah? <laughs> well, all right, you go right ahead. Thank you. and Genevieve O'Hara from Brooklyn. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to have you meet William Cooley. Uh, how are you tonight, William? All right, how are you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we covered that topic rather quickly, didn't we? Uh, is your home in New York City, may I ask? My home is in Georgia. In Georgia, is it really? Yes. Does, uh, does the cold weather bother you up here? Have you noticed? Have you been up in uh, New York very long? I've just been up here seven months. Seven months, eh? Yeah. Yeah. How do you like our first cold spell that started tonight? It's pretty cold, right? <laughs> it certainly is pretty cold. I came down 6th Avenue tonight to give you an idea of how cold it was. I passed a little delicate testing store about that big where two men were picketing, and it was so cold they were running up and down there. To give you an idea. But you are a, a baritone a singer, William. William. Yes, yes. And what are you going to sing for us tonight? Um... I'm going to sing uh, the song of the extra gang, and the song is... The song of the road, is it? About the gangs that work on the road? Yes. I see. Is it, is it uh, an original song, or is it an old, well-known song? Uh, well, it's, it's practically a new song. A new song, yeah. Huh? What do you do? you have any motions with it, or... As, as you... hey, we, we have a motion with it, you know, just like you was working. And uh, you keep up time with, with it. With a pick, huh? Yeah. Oh, sort of a swing song. You get what I'm <laughs> saying, huh? Well, all right. You go right ahead before I confuse everything. Go right ahead. Thank you. You can see the uh, piano player from here. That was William Cooley, ladies and gentlemen, and very fine, too, William. And now may I present Freddie Lamar. Mr. Lamar, are you uh, from New York City, may I ask? 
Well, I've been living in New York for about eight years. For eight years, huh? Do you work yes, here? Sir. What sort of uh, business? A salesman. You are, you're a salesman, yes, huh? Sir. And what is this uh, instrument you have here? Uh, what, what do you call this? It's a novel-looking instrument. It looks like a pair of lollipops tied onto a tin shingle there. What do you call that? It's a vibra-hop. Oh, a vibra-hop. That's what they call a vibra. I always thought a hop was one of those things you found in front of one of the Marx brothers. But now I... That's the only way I ever identify a hop. And you play music on that, do you? Yes, sir, by pressing my thumb. By pressing your thumb, huh? And don't you wave it or anything? Well, I wave it a bit. You, uh... <laughs> you wobble it, huh? Well, uh... What are you going to play for us tonight? Victor Herbert's Sweet Mystery of Life. Vic, on that, on that little thing there? Yes, sir. Well, you go right ahead. I'll be interested to see how this comes out. Freddie Lamar. That certainly surprised me, getting all of that melody out of that little contrivance. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to have you meet the Sloan sisters, Margie and Anne Rose from Brooklyn. Is that right? That's right. And uh, are you really sisters? Yes. Really sisters, yes. huh? I, I'm always suspicious in show business, you know. People say so-and-so, such-and-such, a sister team, and one of the girls has a, an English accent, and the other one will have a Bronx twang, you know, and you can tell them in the minute that they're not. But I'm happy to uh, meet the, the members of the Sloan family, and you're going to sing a harmony number, aren't you? And what is the name of the number? Every minute of the hour. Every minute of the hour. Thank you. Cantor's eyes light up seeing only three girls together like that. You can just imagine. 
And now may I present uh, the four swingsters, ladies and gentlemen. Are you the four swingsters? Well, I'm just one of them. Oh, the other three are over there. They're setting up on the music. Well, I... <laughs> After you've been in radio, you begin to see different things, except in the script. You, uh... Are you, uh... uh do you sing, or do you play an instrument, too? Well, I sing and... We dance around while the band plays. We impersonate the Benny Goodman Swing Trio. Oh, the Benny Goodman Swing Trio. Do right? you come yes, from uh, Bayonne, do you? I'm from Hoboken. The other three are from Bayonne. Hoboken and Bayonne, huh? Isn't Bayonne Jimmy Durante's home? Is that right? I don't know. I, I don't know about Bayonne. I heard it I was. I think Hoboken is. Hoboken? Yeah. Well, I heard that Jimmy was born in Hoboken and his nose comes from New Brunswick. I don't know. <laughs> but I, uh... What are you going to... <laughs> What are you going? What are you going to? Uh, are you going to play for us tonight? I'm going to swing out on that old cartoon China Boy. You're going to swing out on China Boy. All right. If he has no objections, go right ahead. <laughs> Everything I got into my heart seems to stay all paired right. Da di da da do di di da 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 di 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 di. Oh, swinging up di 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 di. La da 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 do di do di do swing to me. Oh, China boy, yes yes, beat it out, brother. Oh, China. The Four Swingsters from Hoboken. And that concludes our amateur contest, ladies and gentlemen. And now, while I keep my rendezvous with the applause machine, Harry has a rendezvous with you. And you have one at Town Hall next Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. We certainly hope you'll all be back at your radios again, and that in the meantime, you'll remember to use the two products that make all these evenings with Fred Allen possible. I pan a toothpaste for the smile of beauty. Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. I pan a... Sal Hepatica. All right, Fred, have you got the result? Yes, Harry. Ladies and gentlemen, the applause meter divulges that your applause has been heaviest for the two acts we have called back to the stage. Now, I'm going to ask Harry to hold his hands over the heads of these boys. There don't seem to be any girls tonight. And as I call the names, I'm going to ask you to kindly applaud once again, if you will, and select your winners for first and second prizes. First, the young man uh, with the baritone voice who sang the song of the extra gang so well, William Cooley. <laughs> and then the young man with the novel instrument, the vibraharp, who played Sweet Mystery of Life, Freddie Lamar. Thank you. And what does the machine say, Harry? Sure, Fred. The first prize of $100 in cash, ladies and gentlemen, goes to William Cooley, the baritone singer. The second prize, $50 in cash, goes to Freddie Lamar. And thank you, boys and girls, for an excellent contest. Good night, and don't forget next Wednesday night for another hour of smiles, ladies and gentlemen, in the Old Town Hall. This is Fred, spelled Ipana, Alan, spelled Sal Hepatica, saying good night. <laughs> This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.